I once asked a septon why the gods make kings and queens. He told me that they are made to protect those who cannot protect themselves. <laughs> the mad old fool must have been drunk on prayers and piety. Because what king has ever bestirred himself to care about the, the orphans of Flea Bottom? What mind do the lords of the land pay to the common folk, the people whose blood is shed in their game of thrones? I assure you, they hardly ever give thought to the people they purport to rule. Or the singers fill our heads with fluff. They tell us stories of the old king Jaehaerys Targaryen, of the Sword of the Morning, Sir Other Day, and other heroes and leaders who supposedly looked out for the small folk. But they're just that stories. The truth is far harsher, and what man amongst you has not felt its cold bite? I have stood by and admired the lords as they rode by at speed all the while thinking to myself that this man who does not know or care about me has absolute right of power to everything I own. With a word on a whim, he could strip away my life and have my head mounted on a spike. <laughs> the helplessness is maddening. I'm a feeling that many of the common folk in the realm have had at one point or other. It was only a few hundred years ago when a newly wedded couple could not hope to share their first night together. They called it the right of the first night. <laughs> During times of peace, we can at least hope for some sort of stability for normalcy. But when the lords up above find that their blood is running hot and they want a chance to joust against each other, a little war, you know, to spice things up, it's the people who are called to fight for them. The small folk. They're the ones that bleed for their claims. Oh, I know the boys and the farmers who are constricted into these armies. They have faint hopes of glory, of knighthood. They sign up thinking that blood will make them men. It's foolishness, all of it. But uh, let them bleed. <laughs> let them bleed. Let them die for their lords. After all, it is our place. The truth is, Westeros is built on the backs of the small folk, just as the eastern cities are built on the backs of slaves. The only difference is that we have the dignity of owning ourselves. To a point, to a, to a, to a point. I think back to that old Septon and the answer he gave me, and I realized that uh, I asked a stupid question. I should have asked him why the gods make dwarves, why they make slaves, why they make orphans and fools and cripples. Simple, really. They just don't give a damn. A kingdom consists of a great many things. You have the high lords and ladies with their maneuvering and politicking, always playing the Game of Thrones with daughters and wealth and any advantage, both real and imagined. You have the poor with their wants and needs and their jealousy for their lords, the whores and their patrons, be they gentle or brutish, the knights and their honor, or lack of it, the septons and sparrows of the faith, the singers and their songs of wars and romances. There are so many things to be accounted for, but all of this is as naught without a ruler who knows the art of ruling. If the gods were good, then every king who sat there on throne will be such a ruler. But these kinds tend to be rare, and the gods are seldom good.